All right, Saints, the devil definitely does not want this video to get out because I record the whole video like 40 minutes long and I wasn't even recording. <laughs> I didn't click the record button. Anyway, so the question of today, how do you walk in the spirit? And we're going to answer that right now because Galatians 5, 16, this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fill the lust of the flesh. But how do you walk in the spirit? This is the question that people want to know. How do you walk in the Spirit? It tells you to walk in the Spirit, but how do you walk in the Spirit? And that's why the Bible is an encapsulation of 66 books in one book. And so it's good to look at the aggregate to understand how to walk in the Spirit, because if you look at the Bible as an aggregate, it explains it when you know a lot of the Scripture, but if you're missing some of the pieces of the puzzle, then you're like, I'm not sure how to walk in the Spirit. I know I should, but how do I do it? And so my job today is to point out to you the pieces of the puzzle that you may be missing so you can know how to walk in the Spirit. Old Testament, you understand the Old Testament better by knowing the New Testament. You understand the New Testament better by knowing the Old Testament. This is a cross-reference. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Hallelujah. We are sealed until the day of redemption. We cannot lose salvation. But it says here, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And so, if your heart isn't hardened and you have a sensitivity to the Spirit, this is how you know when you're not walking in the Spirit because you are grieving the Holy Spirit of God. And those who have some sort of sensitivity, you have a sensitivity towards sin, you can literally feel that you're grieving God. You can understand that you are because God is living inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit. God is living inside of you. So when you're grieving God, that's a warning and a sign that, hey, I'm not walking in the Spirit right now. I am feeling the lust of the flesh. But how do I walk in the Spirit? That's your question. How do I walk in the Spirit? We're going to get to it. I just want to go over some cross-references first. But yeah, we're definitely going to get to that. So please watch and stay tuned to the end of the video to get the full picture of all this. Romans 8, 1 through 6. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It's telling you to walk after the Spirit again. But how do you walk after the Spirit? How do you walk after the Spirit? Now, you how I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But it's still not telling you how to walk after the Spirit. We're going to get to it. But they that are after the flesh do mind. This is the first key, saying it's the first key. But they that are after the flesh do mind. Starts in the mind. The mind is so powerful, y'all. God gave us a powerful mind. But they that are after the flesh do mind. What is the key point here? What is the key point here, saints? Mind. Do mind. For they that are after the flesh do mind. Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, is talking about the mind. So the people who walk after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh. People who walk after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. What do you think about? What do you desire? What do you focus on? For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So it starts in the mind. You have to desire. You have to want. Desire isn't always bad. The word desire has basically become taboo. You shouldn't desire anything. No, you should. The Bible tells you to desire things, the things of God. The things of God, not the things of the flesh. Desire the things of God. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And this ties in here. Matthew 6, 33, my favorite scripture in the Bible. This keeps me grounded. This keeps me focused. When I'm getting too fleshly, I go back to this scripture. Because what does it say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Keep your mind. Be spiritually minded. It's the same thing. Be spiritually minded. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. It's about desire. It's about how you think. It's about what you set your eyes on, what you focus on. It's about free will. Free will is all throughout the Bible. Started in Genesis. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam and Eve not to eat from it. They had the choice to eat or not to eat. But they made the choice not to stay spiritually minded. They made the choice not to stay spiritually minded. And they committed the first sin and they fell by their own choice. And so free will has started in the beginning of humanity. 
It takes free will to get saved. You have the choice to believe or not. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's whosoever. That means you have the choice to believe or not to believe, and everybody has a choice. And then the free will does not stop there. The free will continues in the Christian life. In the Christian life. You had free will before you were saved. It takes free will to be saved. And you have free will after you're saved. You have free will to either walk in the flesh, fulfill the lust of the flesh, or walk in the spirit. Free will never goes away for humanity. Always is there always is there. And then this is what I was talking about, the whole encapsulation of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. This is Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. That is set before us. We can choose either life or death. Blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Therefore choose life. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Therefore, choose life, free will choice, desire to be spiritually minded. We have that choice, and that desire to focus on the things of God is what is going to cause you to walk in the Spirit. I can't make you have that desire. This is something that you have to have. But if you're lacking that desire, and you want that desire to desire the things of God. If you want, it's kind of funny saying it, but if you want the desire to desire the things of God, this is how you get it. If you are struggling with the desire to stop focusing and being so carnally minded, pray, 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 pray. Because this is what I did, and this is my testimony on how I stopped masturbation. I wanted a strong enough desire to stop that wicked, disgusting sin. And therefore, I prayed for it. I said, Lord, help me to be in your will. If you're struggling with the desire to want the things of God and to seek after the things of God, pray to the Lord that your will will be in alignment with his will, that your will will be in alignment with his will. And he will answer that prayer because he wants your will to be in alignment with his will. And if it's off, if it's not the same thing, it's going to end up in death. For to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so if you ask the Lord for that, for your will to be in alignment with His will, He will be faithful to answer that prayer. I promise you. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. If ye desire the things of God, ask, ask for it. What things soever ye desire. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So pray that your desire will align with God's desire for your life. And believe it. Believe it will happen. Believe that God will give you that strength. He will transform your desires through His Holy Spirit. He will sanctify you. That He will sanctify your mind to focus on the things of God. Believe that ye receive it and ye shall have them. He will answer this prayer because any prayer that is in alignment with His will, He will answer that. And so ask for your desire, your will, to align with God's desire in God's will. And you will be transformed. You will start wanting the things of God. You will start thinking about the things of God. You will start wanting to walk in the Spirit. If you don't have the desire, I don't know how to help you. I can't make you have the desire. But I can only explain why you should have the desire. Because if you don't have the desire, you're going to experience loss. You're going to experience loss in this life. The ways of the sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. So even if you are already saved, you can still experience death. Because Romans 8, 6, for to be carnally minded is death. This is speaking to believers. For it to be carnally minded is death. So death doesn't always mean you're going to go to hell. It's just a loss of life, a loss of good things, a loss of godly things. And if you read Romans 8, that chapter, I believe, will help you to have the desire to actually want the things of God because you really get to see from that chapter how bad living in the flesh is. Romans 8, it shows you how horrible living in the flesh is. And so that can help you spark your desire to actually want the things of God. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Do you want peace? Do you want life? Do you desire those things? 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And we got our boy Joshua right here, Joshua 2015. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua had the desire to serve the Lord. It is a free will choice. That is how you walk in the spirit. Do you want to serve the Lord? Do you want to? Because that is what's going to make you make that choice. We have free will. The Calvinists don't understand that. The Calvinist is like, if you're not living for God, it's proof that you were never saved. Totally wicked doctrine. But free will is all throughout the Bible, New Testament and Old Testament. And I'm going to show you some New Testament scriptures next. Revelation 22, 17, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Completely destroys Calvinism. And I did videos in the past destroying Calvinism, and I didn't even use the scripture. This is another scripture <laughs> in my ammo, in my ammo right here. I'll use this in the future. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. We have the power to make a choice between life and death, to walk in the spirit or to fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's a choice. I can't make you have the desire to make the right choice. All I can do is let you know you have a choice to make. And if you read certain scriptures in the Bible, spend more time with God in prayer. And when you grow, you're going to continually want more the things that God wants for you. Your will is going to align with God's will. And when that happens, <clears throat> I just sound like Mike Singarelli right there, a little scratchy voice. <clears throat> and when that happens, when your will aligns with the will of God, then you will walk in the Spirit. You will walk in the Spirit. And this is another cross-reference, Romans 6, 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. This is fulfilling the lust of the flesh. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So it's telling you to make the choice to yield yourselves unto God. God's not going to force you to yield yourself unto him. This is what Calvinism teaches. No, false demonic doctrine of demons. This is an admonition. It's a commandment. It's a, it is a commandment. Yield yourselves unto God, but God's not going to force anybody to do that, to love him. No, yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And this ties in with Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, but yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, but yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And all these things shall be added unto you. This is a choice, saints. We're going to wrap it up with this. This is a choice. You will walk in the Spirit when your will aligns with God's will. When you have the desire to actually yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. It's a choice that you make. Nobody's going to force you to make it. If you're struggling with the desire to have your will in alignment with God's will, you can pray that God will shift your alignment and he will be faithful to answer that prayer, I promise you, because he wants you to want the things that he wants for you. He wants you to want the things that he wants from you. And as your spiritual growth develops over time, you're going to start to desire and want the things of God more and more. The more time that you spend in the word of God and meditating on his word, and the more time you spend in prayer, the more that your relationship grows with God is, the more that you're going to want the things that God wants, the more that your desires are going to shift for the better. So to sum it up, saints, how do you walk in the Spirit? Well, we have free will. You literally have to make a choice to walk in the Spirit. God has set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To walk in the flesh, you must be spiritually minded. How do you be spiritually minded? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. How do you seek ye first the kingdom of God? I don't really know how to make you have that desire. I, I can't like make you have that desire. But all I can say is that spend more time 
growing in your relationship with God. Spend more time in the Word and meditating on His Word. Spend more time in prayer. And again, pray that your desires and your will aligns with the desires and the will that God wants for you. If you don't know what else to do, just pray. Just pray about that. And with that, I'll leave you guys in grace and peace. May the Lord keep you and shine His face upon you always and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.